Okay, how's it going, everybody? I hope you're doing well. Okay, so in this episode, I thought I'd try to say something about the um, the historian of religion, Mircea Iliadi, and his um, incredible book called The Sacred and the Profane. Okay, so let's just uh, jump right into it. Okay, so what Iliadi does is he talks about this, um, this important distinction between what he calls the profane and what he calls the sacred. So, um, what's the difference between the two? Well, okay, at the most general level, the profane has to do with, um, with what's part of our, of our everyday natural world. And, and the sacred has to do with something of a, of a completely different order. With a, with a reality that doesn't belong to our world. Okay, but I should say that this doesn't mean that the sacred isn't here in, in the objects around us. It can be, and it often is. But here's the thing. They're objects that we've, we've consecrated. So, for example, a stone can be, can be just ordinary and profane, or it can be sacred. That's to say, it can be something imbued with or transmuted into a, a supernatural reality and power. Okay, now what Iliadi says is that for most of our history, especially our um, archaic history, we've lived in an almost completely sacralized world or cosmos. That's to say, we've lived steeped in the sacred, or as close as possible to, to consecrated objects and spaces as possible. But what's happened recently, however, is that we've come to live more and more in a, in a desacralized cosmos. In other words, we moderns are now living in a largely profane world. Now, Part of what Iliadi wants to do in this book is to try to compare these two modes of being in the world. He wants to show the differences between, between living a sacred existence as opposed to, to living a, a profane one, especially as it pertains to some of its um, existential implications. Okay, so let's get into some of the details here. So what are these differences? What does it look like? And what does it feel like to, to view the world in a religious or sacralized way as opposed to a profane way? Well, what Iliadi does, among other things, is he discusses these different ways of experiencing the world in, in two different contexts. First, in the context of, um, of space and then in the context of time. So um, let's take uh, space first. Okay, so what he says is that for the um, religious person, space is not homogenous. It's not just all the same everywhere. No, there are real qualitative breaks in space. There are areas that are lit up. In other words, there are sacred locations and spots. Actually, Iliade often equates these, uh, these sacred spaces to what he calls the, the founding of worlds. Now, what he means is that they serve as a kind of um, fixed point or a, a central axis for the religious person. One which helps them to orient themselves and give them direction and meaning. Now here, things like, um, like temples or teepees or monuments are all examples of such, of such worlds or fixed points. Well, okay, well, this is not at all how, how space looks like from the point of view of the, of the profane or from the, um, the non-religious person. When the non-religious person looks out over the, the landscape of our world, 
They don't see or experience sacred lit up spaces. No, what they see is an amorphous, formless expanse. One that's completely homogenous and neutral, where nothing stands out from anything else. In other words, where there's no qualitative differentiation. So from the point of view of the profane, there's, there's no real home or world here. And so there's no real orientation or direction. Disenchantment and um, perpetual homelessness rules. So whereas uh, order and meaning characterizes the, the sacred vision of the world, chaos and lack of orientation characterizes the desacralized or profane one. Okay, well, so that's space. But what about the other thing that I, that I mentioned? Uh, what about time? How is time viewed and experienced differently when it comes to profane versus sacred existence? Okay, well, let's take the, um, the profane or the non-religious point of view first. So what Iliadi says is that profane time is understood as completely linear. Actually, this is something that he seems to associate with the uh, Judea-Christian tradition, where, where time is conceived of as having a, a clear beginning and a determined end. Now, anyway, the larger point here with this understanding of time, which is essentially historical time, is that when something happens, it happens for once and for all. What's done is done. In other words, events are not recoverable. Or um, to put it another way, time is not reversible. Okay, so that's the uh, profane version of time. But what about the, um, the sacred one? Well, at the heart of it is what Iliadi called cosmogony. And uh, by cosmogony, he meant the, um, the mythical creation of the world by the gods. Actually, that's what cosmogony literally translates as, namely, the genesis of the cosmos. Anyway, cosmogony has to do with how the world came into existence according to all of our, our founding myths. And as we know, Practically every archaic culture has their own creation and origin myth, which of course always enjoys a, a special prestige. Okay, but uh, what does this have to do with, um, with sacred time exactly? Well, according to Iliadi, what belief in cosmogony does is it allows us to enter into mythical time. To, to re-actualize or relive this uh, sacred beginning that, that took place in a mythical past. So just like a, a temple in the middle of a busy modern city symbolizes sacred space amidst the chaotic and the profane all around it, well, the, the ritual celebrated inside of it, well, that allows us to recreate beginnings in our own life by reliving or participating in the, the mythological creation event. So, notice something super important here about sacred time. Unlike profane and historical time, sacred time is, is recoverable and repeatable. When we enter into um, sacred time, we can, we can make present what was past and do it over and over and over again. Now, if some of this seems a little bit abstract, let me give an example that might help. So, think of our commemoration of, uh, of New Year's Day. What New Year's Day is, is it's a kind of, um, a kind of regeneration or, or rebirth that happens every year. That's to say, when we decide to, to make a, a New Year's resolution each year, 
What we're doing, says Iliadi, is we're essentially reenacting the model of, of creation itself. Our resolution is the, the recreation of the cosmos. It's our imitation of the gods at the very point of creation. It's our pledge to, to regenerate and start anew, fresh and revitalized, ready for a, a new beginning. New Year's is how we renew the world annually. I don't know, it seems like a, a pretty powerful and inspiring idea, doesn't it? Okay, but you can begin to see how it is then profane time is a bit more, a bit more impoverished than sacred time, right? Or at least that seems to be how Iliadi presents it. And again, that's because for us living in um, profane or historical time, time is strictly linear or chronological. That's to say it has a beginning and an end, which is our death. And when things are gone, they're gone. Well, not so for the religious or sacred time. For those of us who participate in this, well, we get to experience again and again in a, in a cyclical manner intervals of time which belong to a whole different structure and order. Ones that belong to a, a primordial and mythical past full of divinity and creation. Okay, well, let me just end with this. So, I wonder if any of us moderns are really as irreligious or profane as we think. I mean, as Iliadi says, a whole volume could be written on the, um, on the camouflaged myths of modern man. For example, think about all our movies and all our books. Why do we enter into such things? Well, because doing so serves a mythological function. Which is to say, what reading a novel or um, watching a movie does is it helps us to escape time. It projects us out of ourselves and into another realm. And here's the thing. What is that but that deep archaic yearning that we all have for the sacred. Bye for now. <laughs>